Hi everyone, in this video I'll be installing OpenSUSE in a dual boot setup with Windows without using a USB drive. OpenSUSE has two desktop distributions, Tumbleweed and Leap. Tumbleweed is for users who want the latest software and don't mind updating frequently, and Leap is for users who prefer stability and reliability. So I'm going to go to get.opensuse.org, desktop, and then Leap, download. And for Intel or AMD 64-bit desktop, laptops, and servers. So I'm going to pick the image here. And I'm going to be downloading the network image. It's a small image, 261 megabytes here as seen. And during the install, it's only going to be installing the packages that are necessary. So you can just download. All right, it's done downloading here. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to mount. Open. And this is going to mount it on a virtual drive. And we see here it's available on the E drive. And to make this bootable, I'm going to be creating a new partition and putting all the files there. Next, open up Disk Management. And in Disk Management, I can see my E drive here that has OpenSUSE Leap that was mounted. And here's my existing C drive. And I'm going to shrink my C drive to make space for Leap and also as well as for the installation media. So I'm going to right click, shrink volume, and it says here the system requirements, 8 gigabytes of available disk space with a minimum install with manual partitioning, and 40 gigabytes is required for installation with BTRFS, file system and enabled snapshots, and for systems with less than 10 gigs of RAM, swap partition is required. For systems with 2 to 3 gigabytes of RAM, dedicate on disk 3 gigabytes or more for swap. So for me, I have more than enough space available. I have about 418 gigabytes. And in this case, I'm just going to do 50 gigabytes. Shrink. All right, the space is available. And now I'm going to create a new partition for the installation media. We can see it's 261 megabytes. So I'm going to be creating a partition that's the same size. New simple volume. Next. 261. Next. Next. Changing it to FAT32, volume label, I'll label it as Leap ISO, next, finish. All right, and it has been created. I'm going to go back to Explorer, copy everything from my E drive. I'm going to go into my new F drive, and I'm going to paste. Going back into disk management. Now your BIOS should be able to detect the new partition here and be able to boot from it. But if not, it may be because it's seen as a basic data partition. Instead, it will need to be seen as an EFI partition. So that can be changed. Open up a command prompt as administrator. Yes. Go into disk part. Type in list disk. And it's disk zero for me. Select disk zero. List my partitions. And it's the 261 megabyte partition, partition number four. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to type in help set ID. And I'm going to scroll up. And then what I'm looking for is the EFI system partition value in hex. I'm going to copy it. And then type in set ID equals. And then paste the value that you copied. And hit enter. All right, and it has been successfully set. And we can see here in disk management that it has also been set as well. And I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. In my BIOS, I have secure boot and I've set it to disabled. And if you have fast boot, disable it as well. And in my BIOS, I have an option to do a one time boot. So I can boot directly into the partition with the installation media. And it's labeled as UFI OS. And how I know it's labeled as UFI OS is because if I go back into Windows, open up a command prompt as administrator, type in bcd edit space forward slash enum space firmware. And at the bottom, you can see that there's device partition F, the F drive that was created, and the description UFI OS. So I'm going to select it. All right, it's booted into the partition. And then we can see here, there's the options, boot from hard disk, installation, upgrade, and more. So I'm going to go into installation. 
adding the repositories. All right, it started up the installation and you'll see the welcome screen here after it has done the network auto setup. So I'm gonna hit next. And here a pop-up comes up for YAST2. YAST stands for yet another setup tool. And it's about the online repositories and to enable them. So yep, yeah, I'm going to enable them now, yes. Here's a listing of the online repositories and you can add any additional ones that you like. So for example, source repository, debug repository. And if you're not sure, you can just leave it as the default and just hit next. And it'll take a moment just to add these repositories. All right, here it comes up with the system row and you got the different desktops and you got the different environments, KDE, GNOME, XFCE, or a generic desktop, or if you're gonna be running it as a server. Chances are, if you're watching this, you're gonna be doing it as a desktop. So out of this list, I prefer KDE Plasma. I'm gonna hit next. All right, the suggested partitioning screen comes up here. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna create a partition for slash with BTRFS. It's gonna create a partition, only two gigabytes for swap. And it's gonna be mounting the existing partition that's used for the installation media. And it's gonna be installing the EFI system files for OpenSUSE, which is gonna be problematic. So I'm going to be changing this. I'm going to expert partitioner. And I'm gonna be start with existing partitions. So it's gonna be starting from the beginning. So I won't use the suggested partitioning that it has there. And in the screen, it shows all the devices and show there's my disk, dev SDA. And if I go on the left-hand side, I can go to hard disk SDA and I can have a graphical display of my space. And here's the unpartitioned space, the free space that I have available. So I'm gonna be using this free space for OpenSUSE. So I'm gonna to go to add partition. And the first partition I'm gonna create is for the EFI partition for Leap, custom size. And I'll do 512 megabytes. Next. This will be for EFI boot partition. Next. File system will be FAT. Mount device will be to boot EFI, so that's good. And then the FS tab file, go to options. I'm going to label it as EFI leap. I go to OK. Partition ID is correct. And then next. So it has been added. Next partition, add. And this is gonna be for swap. So I have 12 gigs of RAM here. I'm gonna do 12 gigs. Next. This is for swap. Next. File system swap. And then mount device, mount point is swap. And then FS tab. And I'll label it as swap. Okay. And partition ID is correct. Next swap. Next. And the last partition, add. And this is gonna be for everything else. So I'm gonna use the max size, next. And this is gonna be for the OS, next. And so the file system here, it's defaulted to BTRFS. And BTRFS, B-Tree file system, it offers better features. It's great if you want features such as snapshots, RAID, and self-healing. And so if you're an advanced user, BTRFS is great. But generally speaking, for most users, ext4 will be fine. So I'm gonna be selecting that. And then the mount device, mount point is slash, and then the fs tab, and I'll just be putting in here root. Okay, partition ID Linux, and next. And so we see the three partitions have been added. And then accept. So it's gonna be creating three new partitions, the EFI partition, swap partition, and partition for slash. Next. And here's the clock and time zone. So pick your region and then next. And I'm gonna create a new user, put in the name, username, password. And it says here to use the password for the system admin. I would keep that. I prefer it not to automatically log in. So I'm gonna unselect that. I'm gonna hit next. And in this screen here, it's gonna show the settings. So you can see at the top here, the bootloader, and this will allow me to select between Windows and Linux. And I have here secure boot disabled, trusted boot disabled, update and VRAM enabled. So I'll create a boot entry. And then here's the software that's gonna install. And you can always customize it. You can select on software. 
And so for example, let's say you want to do some technical writing, so you can enable it, okay. And scroll down. And you got the default system D target, so it's going to be graphical mode. And if you go into system and hardware settings, it's going to detect all the hardware that you have. And next is security. And so there's CPU mitigations, firewall, SSH service, etc. If you're not familiar with any of these, you can just leave it as the default. You can always change them afterwards, of course. And then there's network configuration. I have a wired connection, so it's going to get an IP from my DHCP server or my router. And then once ready, hit install. And it's asking to confirm and then install. So it's starting the install and it's going to download all the packages. This will take a little bit of time, depending on how fast is your internet connection. All right, the installation completed and you'll get the screen that says the system will reboot now. And it should boot into Grub, but to make sure, after it reboots, I'm going to go into the BIOS to confirm. All right, in my BIOS here, I have boot option number one, it's the Windows Boot Manager. Boot option number two is UFI OS, the installation media. And boot option number three is OpenSUSE. So in my case, it doesn't boot directly into it. So I'll have to change it and have to make it as boot option number one and save changes and exit. All right, it's booted into Grub and we see here OpenSUSE Leap and there's the Windows Boot Manager. So I'm gonna boot into OpenSUSE. Gonna log in. All right, and I get the welcome screen. I'm gonna close it. And so here's the desktop. And now I am going to go and restart and sure I can get back into Windows. All right, I'm at the Grub screen again and I'm gonna go into the Windows Boot Manager. Log in. All right, and I'm able to get back into Windows. So one final note, I'm gonna go into Disk Management. So we'll see here the three partitions that I had created for OpenSUSE. And the partition with the installation media, it may seem that you would want to delete it, but if you do, you may run into a partition reordering issue, which can be fixed. However, just to keep it simple, you can just keep this here. And also as well as if you ever need the installation media to boot into, it will always be available. So that's it. That's how you can install OpenSUSE Leap in a dual boot with Windows without using a USB drive. I hope this video was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.